Pong book, I thought of a couple of things I'd, I'd like to play. The first of them is uh, pretty much unknown. It's Singing the Blues Till My Daddy Comes Home. It was written in 1920, and nobody, I've not come across anybody that knows the song. However, seven years later, um, a, a guy who pretty much established a whole school of jazz trumpet playing or jazz cornet playing, Big Spiderbeck, he, uh, he recorded it uh, with his group with Frankie Frumbauer in 1927. Um, so it's really, really important to us trumpet players, uh, but nobody else has ever heard of the song. So what I thought I'd do, I'd play the, uh, I'd play the head first, the actual melody, the song, and then I'd, uh, I'd play the transcription of the solo that Big Spiderbeck played on it. A um, couple of things to, to mention. It's written in the 20s, which was before swing, so the eighth notes are not really swung. They're not played dead straight, but they're not really swung. And the other thing is that the instrument of choice at that time was the cornet, not the trumpet. Louis Armstrong popularized the trumpet sort of about in the middle of the 20s, but basically through the 20s it was a cornet that was, uh, that was uh, mainly used in jazz. And that's probably because the cornet, the trombone and the clarinet instruments were very much left over from the Civil War bands and th so they were quite easy to come across in pawn shops and things, which is maybe why the Dixie Band came up with a clarinet, cornet and a trombone. But anyway, this is uh, first of all the head, singing the blues till my daddy comes home. So that's the head, and this is what uh, Big Spiderbeck turned it into, which is a lot more interesting, I think, but I'm biased. So that's singing the blues. And I'd, I'd like to I'd like to include a, a regular American songbook song, which um, has uh, it, it's it's tested a lot of musicians over the years. Um, it, I remember my father telling me so. My father was not a musician, um, and he knew this one musical story when he was in camp. For the before the Second World War or after the Second World War, one of the people in, in his uh, camp had a saxophone and uh, used to play every night. Smoke gets in your eyes, and I don't know how many of you uh, know the song pretty well. But so he could play the first A section and the second A section. When he got to the bridge, he had no idea where to go because um, Jerome Kern changed key for the bridge in this very very cleverly. Um, it actually goes uh, from the tonic to the uh, flattened submedian, like J the James Bond uh, theme. Be ba, be ba. So the f the first section is in let's say F major, and th and then the uh, the the bridge is in D flat major. So you've got the uh, the pivot note, the the F, common to both both keys. 
but uh, it, it's fooled so many musicians and uh, let's, let's see if it fools me.